Yes, good morning, Tia. We've been reaching out and talking uh, with students here in the Muslim community uh, overnight and all morning. And now I am joined here uh, with Miss Sabrina Afrin. Come on over a little closer. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so tell us, you know, what are you hearing? How are students handling this? Um, unfortunately, you know, it's a sad event, but I think we are all pretty unified in the event. We're staying together, and I think that's the most important thing to do right now. I think one question that everyone, you know, is wondering, you know, how can students move forward from something like this? Um, you know, it's just something that we have to stay together, stay strong, Buckeye strong, you know. Um, this kind of stuff, unfortunately, is happening a lot, and, um, you know, staying together and not hating or taking it to a next, another level is, I think, really important. I know you and I talked last night about um, the, you know, that, that, that man and um, he talked about not having a place to, to pray here on campus mm -hmm. and you told me that's not true. Yeah, I would definitely disagree with that. We have a very big um, Muslim Student Association. Um, we have very big Somali Student Association. We actually have someone from the Somali Student okay. Association here. Um, he, um, I'm not sure what he, maybe he didn't have the right information or what it was, but we have definitely a lot of places where you can pray and where you feel like you are, you know, allowed to pray. Okay. So. Awesome. Thank you for your time this no morning. Problem. Yes, we'll be hearing from Sabrina and some other students uh, a little bit later uh, throughout the morning. Um, I'm going to send it back to you, Tia. Thank you. This is a partial statement from that organization here on campus, and it reads in part, we unequivocally denounce and reject this violent attack as Ohio State students and as a community of Muslim Americans. We are stronger when we stand together. We cannot allow these attacks to taint the way we view each other or even worse, stand by as some use these incidents to justify violence of retribution against Muslim students or those perceived to be Muslim. Now, see a New Yorker started working this story late last night for you to try to get some some comments from Muslim students here on campus. Of course, I I told you earlier in the newscast that more than 50,000 Somali immigrants call Columbus home. And for that part of the story, CN New Yorker has some students who just met her out here just a few minutes ago to tell their part of the story. See ya. Yes, thank you, Tia. I've been talking uh, with students here in the Muslim community uh, overnight and this morning, and many of them told me uh, they are already feeling uh, some backlash, and there are concerns uh, about having to apologize for someone who was not of their faith. And I am joined here this morning. Good morning, Jenna. Hey, good morning. She is a third year law student. Jenna, you know, we, we had a conversation, you know, just a little bit about, ago about feeling like you have to apologize for somebody who is not of your faith. Can you, you know, talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's, um, it's really concerning when the headlines went from suspect on campus to all of a sudden Somali Muslim refugee. And those are three identities that a lot of people on this campus identify with. And I'm Muslim. I mean, I may not be Somali, but I am Muslim. And so when I see that, the first thought I have is like, oh my God, like I took a deep breath. I sat down, I texted all my friends and I said, he's been identified, just stay safe. Don't come to campus if you don't have to. Um, and yeah. Why is it that uh, uh, some Muslim students feel like they have to be proactive and get ahead of something, you know, like this when, when, when things happen? I think it's because we've seen so many times, time and time again, when there has been an attack and the assailant has been Muslim or claimed to be Muslim, that attacks have happened or people have gone to the Muslim community and been like, why aren't you condemning this act of terrorism? Is this something your faith, you know, uh, condones and why aren't you condemning it and so now Muslims feel like the only way to actually deal with these types of issues is to condemn them before anyone asks them to condemn it but what it does is forces the rest of the Muslims on the community to walk around not only feeling pain but also feeling sorry thank you so much for your comments uh, we've been talking with many students here on campus and we will be uploading those uh, interviews online and on air for now I'm gonna send it back to you Tia thank you Sia, I know we've been in Columbus together all morning long. Last night we got here and you had a chance to talk to some students yeah. who happen to be Muslim and their response to all of this. Yes, absolutely. Since last night I've been talking uh, with students and they told me um, they fear that there's going to be a backlash. Actually, the Muslim Student Association here at the Ohio State University did put out that statement and said there have been incidents and some of the students I spoke with are concerned that this will lead them to a dark place. It's very, uh, you know, a tragic issue that happened. I, my heart goes out to all the victims 
and their families and, you know, anyone that was involved or had to even witness it. Um, it's obviously something that you don't think that's going to happen in your community or even your school. Uh, but unfortunately it did, and um, you know, we're just trying to deal with it the best we can. And so, yes, uh, tonight there is a hashtag Buckeye Strong event uh, that many of the uh, Muslim Student Association members and the Somali Student Association members plan to attend. They're hoping that they can all grieve together and, you know, and just, you know, understand each other a little bit better. It, it's a tough time here on campus, yeah. It is, and as an alum, when I first heard the news, I'll tell you, I was in absolute shock. I guess the good news here is no innocent students, no innocent people on campus at the time were killed in this because this certainly could have been much worse. The aftermath of what happened on the OSU campus continues to linger as students head back to class one day after a fellow student's vicious attack. We heard he was Somali and Muslim and I think that's when there was an extra level of um, concern. Concern on the college campus among many Somali and Muslim students as they too try to get back to normal. Concern third year OSU law student Jenna Alakara says because there's a feeling that she and other Muslims have to apologize for the violent act of someone claiming to be of the same faith. The Muslim students are forced to mourn twice. So we're forced to mourn and then we're forced to almost split our emotions and feel on defense automatically. I think it's sad that we don't get to heal in the same way. Zachary Afera is Somali and of Muslim faith. He says he now feels a sense of divisiveness instead of being unified, Buckeye strong, healing through a difficult time. I pray for the day that we can heal as a community instead of having to humanize ourselves or have to ask to be considered part of the larger community here. A community that says they condemn what happened on their campus. I can understand what's going on because I am a student too, but I also want to be given the opportunity to grieve as an OSU student because this affected me and other Muslims on this campus as much as it affected everyone else.